How's it going everyone? So I thought I'd try something a little bit different. So I got my GoPro on my chin and I'm going to be talking and explaining uh, kind of what I'm doing and what I'm feeling while I'm doing some of my Moto Jutsu parking space drills. So if you didn't know, I have my own app with two out of the four books on there with all my Moto Jutsu drills. The first book has the belt drills, white belt through red belt. And one of the drills in there is parking lot drills. So you start right here and white belt as you go down this one. And then you make a U-turn left, but you skip that one. So you go down the second one, right? And then you go down and you skip one. You just go back and forth skipping one each time. Blue belt, a little bit more challenging. Now you come around, now you don't skip one. Now you just come right back down that one. Really tight U-turns. It's like 16 foot U-turns. Plus you could ride on the line if you want to. So it's like 16.9 because three inches, three inches, three inches. Um, but you don't skip one going all the way up and down. And then brown belt is a figure eight in four parking spaces. And then finally, black belt is you want to get your handlebars to full lock left and right and be able to do rotations at full lock. So I'm just going to go through and kind of explain what I'm doing, if I can, while I'm doing it. I also have my other GoPro right here um, so you can kind of see from that angle if it works. So first, with white belt, um, I always recommend people just don't worry about the rear brake um, with white belt. Just clutch and throttle, clutch and throttle, no rear brake. So let me just show you. So you go down right here, looking where you want to go. You're skipping one. Here's a big old dip and gravelly. See, I'm not using any rear brake. And just skip one. So one big mistake people do is they go right here. They want to make a right U-turn, right? But they start on the middle or like on this side. You're about to make a right U-turn. So you want to use as much real estate as possible. So what you want to do is get your tires way over here so your front tire damn near touches the line to give yourself the most, uh, ch to give yourself the biggest chance for success. So you come way over here and then you go all the way, use all the way the line over there too. And then you come back all the way over to the other side, make the U-turn. And then when you come back in, right, use all the real estate you can. I don't have to make it right here. Sure, it's within the spot. But you could you go all the way over here to this line as well. You see what I'm saying? You don't you use the lane of what you have. Use all the stuff you have. There's no need to shortchange yourself. Whenever I see people practicing this stuff, they're always shortchanging themselves. And I'm gonna go back so I don't feel like going through trash. So the same thing, white belt. So I'm barely here, not even any throttle. I'll just use clutch only. All right, so how am I doing this? What am I doing? So I'm only using the clutch. I'm letting the bike lean, a little bit of momentum. I'm staying upright. I'm letting the bike lean underneath me, right? Nothing too crazy. Uh, white belt parking space drill, uh, nothing too crazy going on with this stuff, right? And uh, believe it or not, I'm still counter steering every single time I make one of these turns. That's how you get the bike to lean. Look at, I want to go left, push left, the bike leans to the left, and I'm going to the left, right? So with white belt parking space drills, so you could go anywhere and do this, which is the main reason why this is like probably one of my funnest exercises because you don't need anything. You don't need cones. You don't need to measure anything. And wherever there's parking spaces like this where there's no middle divider, you could go and do this. You go spend five minutes at a mall, at a grocery store, whatever else, just go back and forth and try these things out, right? And there's a lot of things you could do with white belt. So there, the adaptability of this stuff is also fun. So sometimes if I'm out practicing with people doing white belt, they're like, oh, I could do white belt pretty easy. I'm like, okay, great, now do it one hand. Okay, now do it with the other hand. No clutch, just simple throttle control. Great, now do it standing up, right? There's a lot of variations. So I just did it uh, clutch only, right? So now, clutch is fully out. And I'm just doing a throttle only. A lot of variations of things you could do. You just have to have sensitive throttle control. And since you can't control your speed and you're just at mercy to the speed of the bike, you just have to do things a little bit quicker. Because you have a little bit more momentum, you have to lean the bike a little bit quicker to get the bike to lean. I'm still counter steering. I don't want to go left. I pull right. You see that? You can actually see the handlebars turn. I want to go right. I push right. I want to go left. I want to pull right. Look. Pull it. Get the thing to lean. It just gets the bike to lean. Now I'll go back both hands, so now I'm doing it standing up. Here you go, I'm right in front of the camera too, so maybe you could see. Still no rear brake, just standing up. 
a lot of variations you can stand up you can sit down and then once you get good on your bike you could switch bikes i mean the possibilities are just as much as your imagination can handle so there's white belt and i recommend be able to do this stuff um no rear brake yet because two balls are easier to learn how to juggle versus three so first learn clutch and throttle that is the absolute fun foundation of um, all this stuff, clutch and throttle for low speed stuff. And then when you get a little bit um, better and you get a little bit more confident, then you add a little bit of rear brake. Like once you can't do as high as you could go, once you can't do blue belt or whatever else, so if you could do all white belt with no rear brake, awesome. But once you could do the point where you could kind of do blue belt, but you kind of mess up every now and then, but then you could pretty much 80% of the time do blue belt parking space drills with no rear brake. But then you add a little rear brake, it just elevates you to that next level. Because you can still get the engine going, you could control your speed with the clutch of how much movement you're going, but then the rear brake kind of just drags along a little bit to really get you slow to lean that bike further. And you just, it just unlocks a new potential, like a new video game level, I guess you could say. All right, so there's white belt, here's blue belt. Now with blue belt, it's really important because now white belt you can kind of get away with it if you don't use every inch of your lane but blue belt is super tight so damn near get both tires on this line and you have a u-turn left and when you do that u-turn left you absolutely try to get as like you'll be touching that wine line over there and then immediately get all the way back over to this line as fast as you can so you want to make it as long straight away as possible to get yourself over to do another U-turn. So it's back to back, and now you're not skipping one. Now this requires a whole lot more aggressive steering input, a whole lot more lean angle. And since it requires more lean angle, you probably have to go a little bit faster. Get your momentum going, right? And uh, probably a little bit of uh, rear brake. When I say rear brake, it's not like you're going on and off the rear brake, right? You're not doing this stuff. Your foot's just kind of resting there. You're just adding a little bit, and then just right there, your toe's pretty much covering the rear brake the whole time. You're not going back and forth on and off of it, right? All right, blue belt. <clears throat> Handlebars did not get the full lock. So you don't need to go to full lock to do this. You just have to have a whole lot of lean angle. And the timing of what you're doing is very important. Of course, I'm looking to where I want to go, but is that the most important thing? No. It's not the most important thing. The most important thing is you have to have the speed and the lean angle and the timing of what you're doing to make the stuff. So it gets to the point where I could kind of look wherever. Look at, you know, looking the opposite way, and I still did it. So, yeah, look where you want to go. That's like white belt stuff. But once you get higher level, then you can start doing different things. You're not just limited to the basic stuff. So you see, figure eight, or it's not a figure eight. Blue belt is just every single parking space. And I've done blue belt. This one I'm doing right here, I've done this on sport bikes, I've done this on gold wings, I've done this on any bike you can imagine. So if anybody blames the bike, then they're just not good enough yet. And certainly some bikes are more challenging than others, like full-blown sport bikes with clip-ons. It's definitely challenging because the handlebars don't turn and you don't have much room. Here I got a nine-foot handlebar and it's like a broomstick and the leverage and everything is amazing. But um, regardless of whatever you have, whatever bike you have, I guaranteed you won't get good at anything unless you go out and practice, right? And sometimes ask, people ask me, well, what's the purpose of me doing this stuff? Well, it's challenging, it's fun to do, and it's fun also because it's challenging to do. But if you get confident in doing things like this, so let's think about that. So I just did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so maybe 24 turns in a row. So slipping the clutch, a little bit of rear brake, timing. If I get good at this 24 turns in one minute, oh my God, how easy is the street <laughs> when I do stuff like this to freak myself out or to practice and play around? So it just improves your overall ability, the confidence with your bike, the confidence with your lean angle, the timing of what you do, all those things, all those secondary benefits are extremely beneficial for the street. But a lot of times people, they only ride on the street and that's the most difficult th th thing they do is street riding. Well, street riding for me is the easiest thing I do. I do stuff like this and crazy stuff in the parking lot. I go to tracks and play around in the dirt and slip and slide and freak myself out there and go as hard as I can on the track as fast as I can. So the street is like, oh, this is just simple. I'm just relaxed. I'm just chilling, you know. Some people, that's all they ride in the street and they have no concept of how beneficial other things to do because all the, they're trying to do everything on the street. They're trying to learn how to go fast in the street. They're trying to learn how to have a lot of lean angle and they're trying to gain confidence. They're trying to do everything in the world on the street where it's the most risky. Like, do I rather freak myself out and get all the risk in courses, controlled environments, big empty parking lots, right? That's where to get your 
confidence and your risk taken care of. You don't want to do that stuff on the street, right? So now with brown belt, uh, it's kind of like blue belt, but now it's even tighter. So when you do brown belt, you come over here to the white line, you make the U-turn and you immediately have to get way the hell over here to make the other U-turn. Because remember, this is, now you're doing figure eights in four parking spots, right? Four parking spots. Each parking spot's about eight foot. So eight foot, eight foot, 16, you're allowed to ride on the line. So 16.9 inches uh, back to back to back. Same thing as blue belt, this requires a very quick amount of timing and where you're going, quick movements, looking where you want to go, a little bit of momentum, a little bit of speed, right? Here we go, brown belt. Get the bike to lean, all the way back over here to the line. You see that? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna waste any time. Get back to the line, reset. Circle, 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 all the way back to this line. Lean it. So if I wait, if I come way over here, now look at now look at the angle I'm at now because of I just messed up. I wanted to get to the line earlier so I have a straight line and then make the U-turn. But now I'm at this crazy angle. Now I have to do like a complete circle pretty much where I didn't have to do that before. Now if I'm way over here, I'm like, oh man. It just makes it harder. See that? Now I didn't make it. But if I come all the way over here to the line, I get the bike a little bit more straight. Now I'm straight set up. Like, okay, good. Now I can make it. All the way back over to the line. Go right here. Quick turn. Lean the bike, lean the bike. The biggest thing with this, people don't have enough lean angle. Look at, they're trying to keep the bike straight up and down like this. Like, oh, the, I can't make it. My bike can't make it. Well, look, dude, I, you have no lean angle. Of course it's not going to make it. Look, I'll keep it straight up and down. I'm just trying to turn the handlebars. Even with my big old uh, easy turning radius on this big old bike, without any lean angle, I, I'm not going to make it either. Look at, if I don't have lean angle, I will never make blue belt on this bike. You have to get the bike to lean over. So try to think about it as I want my foot pegs to scrape the ground and actually try to do that. Like get your foot pegs all the way to the ground. Lean it, lean it, lean it, lean it, lean it, lean it. Right, and a variation of doing that, uh, just go within two spaces and then just do straight up circles, right? This will help you for a black belt anyway. Look at, and I'm going over bumps and gravel. <laughs> Here we go, two parking spaces. So I'm just doing 16 foot circles right now, just inside two parking spaces. And this is how to help you get ready for black belt, which is full lock. Here we go, two parking spaces and going over bumps in the gravel. So as you could probably hear, ah, I was uh, I had the RPM kind of set and I was just slipping the clutch, a little bit of rear brake, lots of lean angle. So that's um, white, blue, brown, and now black belt is you get the handlebars to full lock and they just hold it there. And now the parking space lines don't mean anything because you could do this anywhere you want to. But now it requires, um, it's definitely rear brake and rear brake pretty much controls everything. You get the clutch set to where you're slipping it enough to have power. RPM is pretty much set. So you first start doing circles and you get tighter and tighter, then once you get to the point where you're at lock, where you're at full lock, the handlebars don't turn anymore, then it's just a lot of rear brake control, lean angle, being calm, relaxed, we're looking where you're going. That's why this is a uh, black belt, because it's um, difficult. So let's see, I'll just go right here on the better cement. So first I start, all the way over there, there's full lock, now I just hold it there. Handlebars cannot turn no more. And I'm just, my throttle and my clutch are perfectly not moving. I'm controlling everything with the rear brake right now. Only rear brake. See? Let's go the other way. So I start to go, start to go, start to go. There's full lock. Throttle set, clutch is set. Now it's pretty much rear brake only. Rear brake is controlling everything I'm doing right now. My hands are not doing anything anymore. So there you go, white, blue, brown, black. Of the Moto Jitsu parking space drills. So of course, the other drills you could do, you could set up the um, the, the offset weave, which is also pretty difficult. Um, the circles, 40, 30, 20, and then inside 20, one-handed for black belt. And then I have stopping, which is probably the most important thing. How fast can you stop the bike in certain distances? But hopefully this helps, like kind of giving tips and watching me go through this stuff. Again, you could do all these drills if you want to you do it all you could do everything great now try it all standing up now try it all on a different bike lots of things you could do but anyway i'm gonna pack up and uh go out for a ride let's see how the bike looks in the nice morning san diego sunset there we go so parking space drills 
Um, slow speed, talking your way through it. So there you go. Hopefully it helps.